Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to the darts class. Today we're going to talk about how the PDC can improve their television coverage. So at the time of recording, we're almost past the 3,000 subscriber mark, which is crazy. Um, but here we are, um, and we've seen a big increase in subs in the last um, month. So a lot of that is probably down um, to the coverage of the PDC World Championships on Sky Sports and on other networks throughout the world. To be fair, the PDC do a pretty good job of covering the darts on TV. However, there are a couple of glaringly obvious moves they can make to improve their coverage. So the first of these are the presenters, their commentary and their analysis team. Now I'm not here to tell you who should be sacked, I'm never um, one to try and promote somebody to lose their job, um, however there are a couple of key people that aren't included in Sky's commentary and analysis team um, that should be and a couple more that should play a more prominent role than they already do. So if I was at Sky Sports and I was trying to look at who to get in to um, the studio for any darts coverage, the first thing I would do is I would appoint Dan Dawson, Chris Murphy and Paul Nicholson to the team. Now all three of these commentate on PDC TV which covers the Pro Tours and the European Tours. Now this is the week in week out style darts that a lot of people don't get to see on television. So it only makes sense that these guys are included in the flagship events. They'll have insight into how they're playing, what their year's been like, where they've played well, um, and they will know all the key statistics in which to reference throughout their commentary. Now there are two people who are already in the Sky Sports team that I think should take a more prominent role. They are John Part and Mark Webster. Here you've got two former world champions, two players who know what it's like on that big stage and have relatively recent experience too. They both talk a lot of sense and they speak well on commentary too. So those are the personalities that I think would enhance the coverage of the darts, but next we're going to look at the coverage itself. So we're going to look at two or three other sports here to see how Sky Sports have revolutionised the analysis of the game to make sure that people who are watching at home who might play at an amateur level get an insight into what exactly is going on and what they can improve in their own game to achieve what they're seeing on TV. So let's start with Sky Sports Golf. Sky Sports Golf have got the cart. So when a player finishes his round, they can go to the cart and this interactive system here allows the presenter to speak with the player, highlight certain shots they've had during the round, where they've played well, where they've played poorly, and then they can get an immediate reaction from the player. Now when a player comes off the stage after playing darts, they will often get an interview with Sky Sports, so this is something that they should integrate into their coverage. This way the players can straight off the um, off the hockey, they'll be able to see what their averages are, what their double percentages are, they'll be able to see their key shots at the key moment, you'll be able to get a good reaction from them when they're able to accurately recall what's happened in the match. If that, 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 that's how darts is going and that's how it gets played now, have fun, I'm off ski, I'm away going for a game of golf or something. This would get rid of a lot of those cliches that you see players coming out with a lot. I played well, he um, hit his doubles well in part, my scoring was good, my doubles were bad. This would give them a chance to evidence that and show, actually no, your doubles were quite good here, um, but it was a scoring in the second and fourth leg, or when you um, didn't have the throw, you weren't pressuring enough, and um, which meant it went to a last leg decider. Now, they do this in cricket too, but one of the key points they do in cricket and Sky Golf is the in-studio analysis. So for Sky Golf, for example, they have their, um, their simulator set up in the studio. Therefore, if a player is shanking one to the left or the right, a former pro is able to stand up and tell people how he should be addressing the ball and what he should be doing differently. Now there's nothing stopping Sky Sports having a studio where um, they've got the hockey set up and if you've got Mark Webster or John Park or any of these ex-pros or Wayne Mardle or Paul Nicholson even um, in the studio anyway then they can be talking through what went wrong in the match, what went right in the match. This way you'll be able to give a better visible representation of the analysis that you're giving. The next thing that I would like to see change is the in-game coverage. Now the classic split screen has been part of Dart since day one. However, innovations in ball tracker in golf, in um, VAR in football, in Hawkeye with cricket uh, and tennis, you've got all of these different um, bits and pieces of technology that are surely at Sky Sports disposal. 
they should be using them for darts. Um, it would be really interesting to know who throws their darts the hardest, who throws them the loopiest, um, who takes the longest to throw them, who throws them the quickest. It's all well and good saying Justin Pipe throws slowly or Ricky Evans throws really fast, but this way you can evidence it and it would be really interesting stuff to see. The last thing that I think would make the coverage even better is an insight into what the players are doing backstage. Before a football match or a cricket match or a rugby match, even golf, you see them on the driving range, you see them warming up. Now I know there's an obvious reason why they don't want the cameras to go behind the scenes of darts of how players are preparing before a match. I love a pint of wine. But when they're talking about the player and it's just a Wayne Mardle piece to camera or a Rod Harrington piece to camera, wouldn't it be good to see the player that they're talking about when they're talking about how someone's throw is sped up or um, they've changed the way they stand? Let's have a look at them in the back room. Let's see how they're warming up. And then that leads me to the final point. Why don't we see the bull off? Now, if you watch PDC TV, on the live stream cameras there, you do see the bull off and sometimes it can go on and on and it's not that exciting. However, we have to wait until both the walk-ons are completed to know who won that and to know who goes into the match with the added advantage. And it would add another statistic that you could have um, to build tension and build atmosphere throughout the year. You could have Michael Van Gogh in the Premier League and say, oh, this is his seventh match and he's won all six bullseyes up to this point. Today he didn't win the bullseye, let's see how throwing second affects his game. All of these points, I think, would just provide that added extra bit of information that players who don't play regularly um, will get to learn how the game works. There's an awful lot in darts of having people up on the pedestal. These are the best in the world, and yes, they are. But there's not enough analysis of their game, how they get there, how they improve, and then also showing people at home how they can improve too. So what do you think? How do you think Sky Sports can improve their coverage of the darts? Is there anything that you would change? Anything you'd keep the same? Anyone you'd get rid of? Anyone you'd bring in? Let me know in the comments and we can have a chat about it. Otherwise, if you've watched this far, please remember to like and subscribe. I live stream most Wednesdays and most Saturdays, so please come and join me for a chuck and a chat then. Otherwise, I'll see you the next time on the Darts Class.